Let's begin by making a simple animation that's 179 frames to zero, which is 180 frames long. There it is. Now you have zero to 180. So let's create a floor, a plane, really quickly. Then let's, for instance, make a, a little city. <coughs> Once we create the little city, it'll make a uh, pathway for the camera so we can fly through it. Which is the question, how to make 180 frames go linear and slower than completely stop with a curve, for instance, instead of just a one-point animation. Go into cameras, uh, go in the top view here, and create a camera, a target camera, <coughs> 35 millimeters. And I'll start back here in space, if you would and uh, I could either have it free flow and move the camera by hand or I could do something really fun and create a dummy <coughs> right here and underneath of the camera maybe right here I could create a uh, dummy right underneath of it and then I select the camera and its target with a shift uh, control key and then I link them to the dummy now I can move the dummy around so if I want to animate, let's go right here, right click and press C for camera. If I want to raise that camera up to have a different point of view, I can see where I'm going. <coughs> and I can always rotate where I am, almost like a video game would. So let's go back here and auto key uh, from frame zero. OK, again the camera position can be controlled by the dummy itself as you can see so that gives you position rotation etc now what you want to do is go down and move to say frame 160 or 180 whatever your end position is whatever you want now simply move your camera dummy where you would like to go and now you have 161 actually because 160 is the zero is added on to 160 frames of your animation now if you go into animation go to the right and you'll see graph editors track view curve editor now if you open this up you'll notice that you have dummy one x position y position and z position and then you have rotation if you were going to do rotation so let's go to position which is a bunch of different uh, differences. You have your red, green, and blue for your X, Y, and your Z. Okay, uh, X is red, Y is green, and Z is blue. So Z is the direction that we went. If you look at the top, you'll notice on its right-click local, right, or the the top view itself, we were actually moving. Should have been local. Okay, that's weird. Anyway, hmm. Okay, it was X. I'm not crazy. <laughs> All right, so you have your X position, as you see, X, Y, and Z. Y is green. X is red, and uh, that's how that works. Your X, Y, and Z, your colors match down here. So you start off at minus 120 X, and you go to 70 plus when it animates. Okay. Let's see if I can put that in there. Now, your exposition, minus 120 to 70. Let's go back to the animation itself and take a look. So you said to about frame 90, you want to have a linear motion. So let's open up the graph editor, curve editor, and on frame 90, you want to go up here and you want to look to make a new keyframe to create a new keyframe. Basically what you can do is you can click on here, add keys, little plus icon, and create a key. Then from, I believe you said frame 120 to 160, you want a different type of slowdown. Now you can actually move those keys by searching for them. See they're gray right there and you scale in, scale out. 
Now you can change the rate at which the curve gets to that point by dragging this way. And it's really up to you at what point you want it to fade out. Now let's take a look at that animation. See how it slows down at 120? To make this a little more um, understandable what we're doing, I'm just going to highlight all of those items, hold the shift key down, and make it go further back, like a virtual reality tour or something. Okay. So now you'll see it go there, here, and slow down here. So again, goes in, slows down a lot. See how it slows down a lot there? That, uh, that curve obviously has to be fixed a little bit. So if we click on the dummy again, you will see the keyframes here. Almost at 90, move it to 90, at 120. When you click on these and you move them, you'll notice at the bottom it tells you where it is and how off the original position you were. Then it'll also give you the XYZ position, etc. And that's pretty much about it on how to do that. Now you had a question about how to make it linear. You can also right click on these keys and go to right click dummy 01 position and change the in and out by holding down your left mouse button and make it linear in, linear out instead of a curve. Now let's look again at the graph editor, track view curve editor, and see what that did. See so that comes in and it keeps going. So right here, right click, make it linear, and make it out linear. See what it does? And here we have it linear, but out, not linear, but we can make it a curve. That's a little bit of a curve there, so you can click on that, and you're able to modify it. Same thing here. This is a Bezier. See how the Bezier icons come up? So you can go out with a Bezier if you want. See? Now when you move one Bezier, it forcibly turns this back into a Bezier. So you could go back and say, linear on that side, Bezier on the other side, which is a little strange, but you could do it. Let's take a look at that strange animation again. I guess we could shrink this down a little bit, turn this view into the camera, and turn it into a preview mode, and take a look at what's going on here by moving this back and forth. See, it bounces a little because it goes down. You can change that and make it go up. And that's